Welcome back to This Car Pod. I'm Kenan. I'm Filippo. And today we're going to talk about lots of things, starting with car news. Filippo, begin. All right, do we want to start with the Toyota 4Runner? Toyota has teased the new 4Runner on Instagram. Can you explain where the 4Runner in their lineup? Okay, here's what Toyota did that is very astonishing to me. They've moved the Sequoia into the position where the Land Cruiser was. Right. They've taken the Land Cruiser and put it in the forty to sixty thousand dollars, which is where the Forerunner, where the Forerunner is. is. Yeah. So. So where is this going to fall? So from forty to sixty, you have the Land Cruiser. From sixty to ninety, you have the Sequoia. Where will the Forerunner be positioned? And the Land Cruiser is already like an off, like the Forerunner's bit. Right. My assumption was that they were going to turn the Forerunner into a Jeep Wrangler and Bronco competitor and make it like an open oh, drive, yeah, like yeah, the original yeah. one, which might but be I possible think, still. I don't think so. I think this image kind of shows that that's not going to happen. It looks like a full-bodied SUV yeah. with a tailgate. It does. Yeah. You need a spare tire to do right. that and all that. Can I throw out a wild theory? Mm. All right. You know how Chevy moved. The the trailblazer from a trim of the blazer to a standalone model. Uh huh. What if Toyota's doing the opposite with the Forerunner? You It'll be the make... Toyota Land Cruiser Forerunner. No, they got too much equity in the I, name to yeah. do that. Yeah, I agree. I hope they don't do that. I, I don't no, understand like it. Bad bad idea. Idea. I don't understand it. I'm really confused by it, and I'm curious to see what they've cooked up because this, to me, does not make yeah. any sense. If you're a buyer in the in the fifty thousand dollar off road SUV segment, and you can choose between a Forerunner Land Cruiser, you're going to choose a Land Cruiser. Right. That's mm-hmm. the cool one. Right. Or the GX five fifty, which is the same the exact GX, car. Yeah, which is then in the slightly higher yeah. tier. So they they have this whole section covered. Yeah. It's very strange to me. And now they're teasing it. I was curious. I really thought they would do a Wrangler. Yeah, but they didn't. Maybe they'll go smaller, like Chevy did with the Trailblazer. It may go smaller, so maybe they'll make a maybe they'll make it a thirty to fifty thousand right. dollar, which but would be that's a that'd be a fun market to be in. I think it'd be great to have a thirty thousand like, dollar. You're already getting order. people paying right, sixty. Right, exactly. exactly. And also, the only four runners I see are TRD off roads yeah. and in California. That's true, but yeah. they're really slicing this segment thin, and I don't understand how they're doing it. And I when what they're going to do. It makes no sense to me. Um, next up is the Fisker situation. <laughs> Back to Fisker. Okay, oh, this boy. is what happened. I've spent a lot of time reading about this, and I love it. Fisker is done. I mean, they're doneer than done. Okay, yeah. the stock dropped to nine cents and was delisted on the New York Stock Exchange. Correct. Oh. <laughs> it's the, hard the, to believe. I know. <laughs> um, the ocean. So they're desperate for cash. So the ocean. They have dropped the starting price to $25,000, which makes it the cheapest electric car on sale, even cheaper than the Nissan Leaf. The Ocean Extreme, which is the high-performance one, with 565 horsepower, they cut the price $24,000. It now starts at $37,500. Now, this is only for 23 models. But are there 24 models? Well, okay. So I read that they've built 10,000 of them, and they've sold 4,700 of them which means they've done this for the remaining 5,000. Yeah. They must have done some multiplication problem that they need, they need if they can sell X at X average transaction price, like yeah. they can get they can this much cash to Cover the payroll for, for this period of time. Yeah, yeah. for however long. They're, they're done. That's you think it's over? Shame. I mean, the, the, there was talks of a manufacturer, Nissan was the theory, yeah. investing them or purchasing them. Right. That didn't happen. Right. Lucid has the benefit of the Saudi investment fund mm-hmm. that it invested another chunk of money in them last week. Really? Fisher doesn't have that. There's, there's just no reason to purchase them. They have no unique IP. Right. They have no brand recognition. They have the, no support. The Ocean is like, cool. has California mode. I think it's a cool car. I, I think it's a cool really car, enjoy too. driving but, it. Yeah. I just see no reason why any manufacturer would be like, I'm, I'm like, going to buy them. Right. For, right. What, what reason? Right. Uh, and they, they, don't have, they don't have their own fact. It's not like you're, bu- you're buying the right. contract <laughs> to build it in Austria. Yeah. Right. Which, by the way, how the heck did they... They don't even produce... Like, they right. don't have dealers or a factory. Right. How did they... Right. I know, it's like a, it's like a company. You don't even have that many exist. fixed costs. They have employees, yeah. of course. Th- there was news yesterday. There was a report in TechCrunch that they had some internally bad uh, internal practices. So they couldn't account for millions of dollars in payments. They could not account for millions of dollars of customer purchases. Like they, they didn't know where that payment went. And in some cases, for like subscription and, and other things, they just didn't have payment methods for those anymore. Um, I, it's yeah. a shame so, because the, I thought the product was cool. It's just the execution and the business yeah. that was just been. Okay, okay. now that it's twenty five grand, are you buying? Ken? <laughs> no, there, there's the thing. That's even a, if you, you bought one cheap, even you? if these become ten, you just have no support. And it's a, and it's such an early development car. There's, I mean, there's no one to figure. We it out. We already know screwed. they're glitchy. Right, yeah. it's they're gonna not, be you're not going to get those things updated. So whatever glitches it has, right. you're stuck with them. Right. The only thing it would be good for is if you have an office like ours and you need a sound booth eventually. When it bricks <laughs> itself, you have one. Like I mean, that's. I, I but think it's. Cool. I think they're really cool. It's the just move shame. is obviously to lease them. They don't. They're not doing leasing. They're not doing. They, leasing. I don't think they ever they did. Need leasing. the cash. I don't think they ever did leasing. They never oh. set it up fully. Oh. Yikes! That well, was, that's the real problem because that's where EVs so who's, are who's selling. Buying, right. 
is like incredible lease deals. So like who buys it even at 25 or 35? It's a great deal. They're but basically selling it as a, at a used car price yeah. for a new car. Which by the way, I feel bad for everybody that bought one at I, full I know. price I three saw months one ago. this morning and I was yeah. like, Ugh. Ugh. But we, hey, at least that little window goes down. <laughs> 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 so cool. They got that. They got so that. Cool. That they have. I can't take that away from you until it breaks. Uh, okay, Fisker's done. We all agree, right? Yep. Yep. Next thing, what is that one? I don't know. I was thinking <laughs> Genesis something. Magma brand. Correct. Filippo, would you define magma for us? No. Okay, it's some sort of volcano yeah, some of that. thing. Other yes, that's, it's yeah. like, isn't magma before it erupts and lava is after? Or is that one or the other? I can't do remember. not have my volcanic knowledge. But, Me but Genesis does, and so they've come out with the magma brand. There's going to be the G80, which is inexplicably only going to be sold in the Middle East. Yep. So forget about that. Yep. It seems cool because it's going to be a high performance. It's like right up Kenan's alley. Yeah, it's high performance sedan. And, and, a, the, and, the and like a big, great. nice sedan. And it looks good and all that. But you'd have to go to Riyadh to buy one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, I'll cross that off the list, I guess. They're going to send us the GV60. Yep. Uh, which is going to come here and have some amount of horsepower. And then there's some sort of coupe, which I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it will sell zero. <laughs> it, it, it was one of their concepts from last year. That's a concept car. It yeah. looks And awesome, the, the, the GV80 it does, was also... It will not, it will, therefore, it will, it will not be made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the GV80 on the far left there, which is their big SUV, was also teased as teased. a high-performance edition. The um, GV60 Magma is going to be an EV6 G or an we assume so. They, they have not announced what what powertrain or really battery specs and motors will be in it, but yeah, we assume that. And the uh, Ionic 5N has a 600 something horsepower. Well, okay, here's and, an interesting factoid for you. Do you know that the EV6 GT and the I5N, Ionic 5N have different horsepower ratings? <laughs> They're twin cars with the same platform, yep. just different styling. Yeah. They decided to go right. different horsepower numbers. Which one is more? The Ionic 5N, strangely enough, which is weird because the EV6 is the you know cool looking one. They're, they're both cool looking ones. They are, but the EV6 yeah. is like the performance looking one, basically. But it, if it has the Ionic 5N powertrain, 601 horsepower, 545 five pound feet of torque, clearly there's some styling upgrades. Maybe there's other like handling upgrades. Who knows? There must be. That'd it be also cool. has weird wheels. The, the GV60 is, an, is a heinous car. Yeah. OE, when you put it in orange, it's worse. It doesn't. We, we, we can all agree this, right? Benefit the no. car. <laughs> but 700 no. horsepower would. <laughs> what about 601? Benefits any car. I can overlook. Yeah, I, but I bet it's going to be more than, than the you Ionic 5. Yeah, it has to be. And that. the EV6, because the regular GV60 performance has more than those. And so I bet it's going to be like, I can overlook a lot of hein, heinous yeah. styling for 700 horsepower. I can you, could you overlook like, an XM if it had 700 horsepower? Oof. Yes, That's some but they, really if it had 700 horsepower, they would charge even more money, which... <laughs> which is just right. evaporates the second you would agree to it. Yep. Right, but right. Unless, cool. Can't wait to see him. Okay, next news story. Ooh, Audi R8. We're, we're done. No can more I, Audi R8. No more Audi R8. I mean, I can't imagine they were selling many over the last couple of years. On the contrary, I read, listen really? to this. That, so the TT ended production November of 23. The uh -huh. R8 was going to end in yeah. December of 23, and Audi had so many orders for the last round of them that they extended production an extra <laughs> 90 days and got crazy sales over the last wow. few months of the R8. Interesting. Yeah. What's but this? those people, to your point, those people were only buying because, because it was they the wanted end. one of the last. La yeah, right. Yeah. But great car. It was yeah, just a phenomenal car. Such a usable, practical supercar, relatively reliable, great styling. And you know, we've had friends who had the previous generation, the, the first gen, the facelifted first gen R8s, and just a wonderful car. Like it's gonna be sad to lose that NAV10. You know, I would argue yeah. though that it did what it was supposed to. It did. Oh, absolutely. No. As did the TT, which came out in 2000. Yes. Like, both of those cars got people to think about Audi as something other than a weird, great, esoteric brand. Yeah, the greatest Halo execution of greatest all Halo time. Greatest Halo execution ever. Easily. Yep. Ever. But it outlived its purpose. Audi has now sure. occupied that yeah. space. We all now think of it as it. even to BMW right. and Mercedes-Benz. It was and, a brilliant play at the time. And they've got Lamborghini under the Volkswagen umbrella already, so right, you right. don't really need two very, very similar cars right. on the same platform. Right. It's, it's over as far as I'm concerned. It did what it needed to do. I'm sure it will be resurrected as an electric car. It's what it kind of seems like based on the Huracan. Yeah. But it won't be as cool as care. the NAV10. Yeah, it won't be as cool as that one. Yeah, <laughs> no, right, exactly. No. doesn't even matter at this it point. It is just such a good looking car. It is an excellent yeah. car. And it just, and it gets. And you know what? It looked about as much as like it did when it came out in 08. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did a really great job of the styling. They they innovated, but not too much. It's still yep. hard. Yeah, well, they knew they they looked great from then, and they just made it continue yeah. looking. What's that what sound is... though? That that glorious V10 sound. Yep. Yeah. Yep. it's over. Uh, what is the most expensive car in Audi's lineup now? Some A8 version, RSQ8, RSQ8, I would bet, yeah. or some some S8 type thing. Yeah. Of course, S8s. 
That's also the biggest discount in this lineup. <laughs> right, I can't that, believe they're still making that car. So that's the Audi R8. Good and boy. our next news story, Filippo, do you want to take us M- through this? Uh, McLaren. So the, the Bahrain Investment Fund, the name of which I'm blinking on. It's uh, like Muda Maya. Yeah, Mama. some of that. That, that. That's close. Yeah. <laughs> um, had previously bought McLaren's F1 program and racing program, and now, as of this week, purchased the entirety of McLaren's road car division. Wow. The, they, a, they had previously had like a large majority investment, but now they they own all of what it. What a purchase! This that is, is a company. This is a company's never been successful. <laughs> well, except on the racetrack. But right. But like as a financial, I mean, but not no. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, they've been bleeding money. The Artura. Did that ever come out? <laughs> That's a great question. It I is, drove I haven't one. Seen you know we live in Southern California where we see a you lot see of all of them, I yeah. haven't seen an yeah, Artura just that's driving a great around. Point. What- where are those? Where I've seen Amira's like starting already, but not. They have had the so many problems lately. I can't believe Bahrain feels like this is a. Well, McLaren needed the money. Clearly, okay. Right? Like, like the, the, this move I could use another them, hundred mil. Give them the full ownership, and presumably there was some some cash added here. Well, yeah, Bahrain paid them a ton right. of money to buy the yeah. the brand, but this is they're taking over this like this brand that's just flailing. Do you know at one point McLaren was considering, or maybe they did sell off some of their heritage race cars? Yes. Yes, I had heard that. Hey, if you need the cash. And that the, F1 and MTC as well, mil. I believe, right? I think the, the McLaren Technology Center was part of that, too. Oh, really? I think. I mean, it's um, a bu- the whole situation is I think you're right, bizarre. yeah. But it is a bizarre awesome. situation. I mean, uh, the thing about McLaren is, like, yeah, the road cars are fudging, but, man, they're killing it in Formula 1 right now. They are really performing well. And the last year, they brought some upgrades to their cars and just, like, really, really crushing it. So, I don't know. And, and it is interesting because like, the cars, I agree, the road cars are... Uh, a problem. They make too many of them. Too many. Yeah. You can't tell the difference between too too many special editions. Too many. It's and they like, don't sell the ones they do make. And now the 750s is out and new, but it looks like, it's like identical right. to right. the 720. And so you have to wonder what these investors are going to do with it. Like, do they want to focus it? Do they want to? I mean, they, like, I don't they? think anything changes whatsoever. I, there's a number of Middle Eastern governments that have just a ton of cash and yeah. have invested mm-hmm. heavily. The, the the Saudis have invested heavily in Lucid and a lot of other manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something. It's a good way money. to put money in McLaren's. The brand value is so the strong that you're strong. never going to lose all your money. Right. Like right. someone somewhere will always have a, a purpose yep. for this brand, unless of course it's Saab. Um, <laughs> which I'm right. still waiting for that resolution. Well, if only Saab had made Formula oh. One cars, you know, and like won many, many. World is it McLaren the manufacturer they made the jets best? And won wars. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know if they actually. Is, is McLaren the, the, the manufacturer that gets the best like journalist reviews and has the fewest sales? Yeah, that's an interesting Maybe. Mazda. Aston's Aston usually get pretty good reviews, yeah, too. Yeah, Mazda. I was over. thinking about this today because I have this Maserati press car, and McLaren's like Maserati. Like, Porsche has this, you want a Porsche. Yes. And they have this aura around the brand that they yeah. can make stitching five grand and people will pay it. Right. Well, again, it's, it's also, not that easy for McLaren. It's identifiable. Like, the, the differences between, like, Porsches are pretty identifiable. Yeah, you can tell a yeah. turbo from a base 911 from a Cayman. And, like, and, you can and, tell. If you, and thus, if you speak the language, you see one, you right. know. Right. This is yeah. like, everybody thinks like YouTubers and crypto people. Right. And I mean, that's, that's it. And that's a right. very undesirable, if you want to spend that much money yeah. on a sports car, it's a very undesirable they've group kind to of, buy into. I feel like in, in some ways they've kind of become what Lamborghini was and like the people that buy them like want to show off and the doors go up. Yeah. Know, billionaire yeah. doors. And like that's what McLaren has they're become. They're just not so. as cool Sorry. as Lamborghini's ever. Yeah. Well, Lamborghini was. Are you implying that they're not that anymore? Less less so Dude, now. it's less over. So. Lamborghini is the connoisseur's brand now. Not, not I wouldn't say ones. that, but more so <laughs> than it once was. Less Ed Hardy jeans are showing yeah, up. Yeah, I agree. Know? Although Urus is, man. It, it is Red notable that and... Stradman owns no McLarens, and none of the other really big car YouTubers have at least a non-Senna. Lambo has kind of taken Lambo's over Lambo's taken that. over all of that, which is embarrassing for McLaren. Like, you're trying to be showy, you're trying to guys. do that. Lambo's just, right. is just cooler. It's like, it's it just, just Lambo was moving into that territory yeah. that Porsche's in already, that Ferrari's in, like, just plain cool. Right, yeah, I McLaren think... is struggling to get there. Maybe it's because yep, the I British it's... have no... Maybe it's because every single one of these cars is the same engine. <laughs> they have yeah. no V12s. That is a cool car, though. That's Senna. Senna is an extreme car. Senna's an ugly exactly. car. But Speed Tail is cool. It is ugly. Speed Tail. Great, one of the greatest cars. Also ugly. And Sarah. Okay, we have three more news stories. Yeah. We're going to go through them very quickly, then move on to a market report. Uh, number one, there is a new Infiniti QX80. Yes. Correct. Uh, I'll give you some fast facts. Twin turbo V6 instead of a 5.6 liter V8. It used to be a has NAV8. 50 more horsepower as a result. Okay. Incredibly. Um, 85 to 115 thousand dollars. These facts aren't fast enough to make it interesting. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Next. <laughs> next one. Um, <laughs> all right. Defender Octa, high, high performance Defender. So obviously there's a Defender V8. There's also this, which will in theory have a twin turbo V8. And cool. some like like a wider track, some off road stuff. Six hundred and twenty six horse. They're saying oh. because there's one. It's already in this Range Rover version of the Range Rover Sport. Now, here's yep. my theory on this. Yep. 
I think that Land Rover deeply screwed up when they came out with the V8 Defender making it a perf- an on-road performance right. car. Wow. I have a theory that this poorly named Defender Octa <laughs> for, for octagons, that's legitimately is going to be an off-road high-performance yeah. build. You can already see it's got these yep. cool Bronco cool Raptor G550 right. G63. Squared. Yeah, whatever. I mean, that's is. that's where they should be. Yep. And Agreed. and that would give them so much credibility if they did that an off-road high-performance version like those yep. cars. So that's my Can I can I give a fun fact about about Jaguar Land Rover? They've rebranded to JLR and they're splitting off their four sub-brands. Yeah. Defender, Range Rover, Discovery, and Jaguar. Yeah. So this will be the probably the pinnacle Defender. Yeah, if you go on the website it's already split off. Wow. Like wow. you click on Discovery to get right. to the Discovery Sport. Not that anyone does that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you're looking at lease deals. Uh, last one is the updated G-Wagon. The G-Wagon has been updated. It ditches the V8. The base model G-Wagon ditches the V8 for a turbocharged six-cylinder. Mm-hmm. The G63 keeps the turbo V8. Yep. And it finally has steering assist for adaptive cruise control. Finally. The G-Wagon is the last nice car that does <laughs> not have... It just has adaptive cruise. It does not have auto steer. And for But for 25, it now finally does... So you can finally get one if you're me. Here's the question. Will, will you be it. able to tell that it's the new one? The, no, it's like no, a no. slightly redesigned bumper. No. That's it. No. You will not be able to tell. And that's embarrassing. <laughs> and that and that's notable. It's a nice Sam vehicle. Will. Ergo. Yeah. <laughs> Sam will know. Our friend Sam will know all about it. But yeah. That's pretty much the only person. Yep. yep. That's the news. That's the news. So we now move on to the market report. Market oh, report. Market Kenan, report. please go first. You have a couple of interesting market report items. Yes. Yeah, so a couple of things. So one F10 M5s are coming down. They continue to depreciate. We sold one recently in the high 20s. Well, that one which serves me. Um, which is remarkable that they're that. They're coming down to that level. Now, admittedly, of course, it was far from perfect. Um, but Ooh. this one was bid to 20,500. Teens, teens. But 30, 26, 19, 32 for one with 42,000 miles. It was modded, but still. You but get, still the point like, is being bad. The, the point there. five is wild. I have said for a long time, as have you, that this car is an extreme buy. Like it's In the 40s, it totally. was an amazing car. And now it's just continuing to get that way. Granted, these cars do have reliability yep. problems. What a surprise. It's a BMW yeah. M product. But still, I think that this is incredible that they are they are getting into this what do you think about a floor for these things i don't know i mean the e60 m5 is like they're you can get them in budget for 10 dude there was a time when they were like eight for 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 clapped ones yeah yeah. which a lot of them became yeah i remember when the e39s on average passed the e60 in terms of value on their ascendancy but the e60 is climbing and someday this will climb too but it is not in its climbing phase no it is definitely in its i mean well it's the the, final the the, the e60 special v10 the only v10 m5 this was the The, last manual m5 last stick right but but will the auto one Rise. Yeah, dude. I dude, think the they'll, they'll these, pull them all up mm-hmm. for really nice competition models. I think so. That's true too. Comps and the thing Fall about these is it's the Canon. With respect, it's either the most attractive or the second most attractive. I M5. think it's yeah, it it's my second favorite M5. Car. Yeah, it's just yeah. they are yeah. such it is fantastic gorgeous. looking cars. And it has 560 horsepower. I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, it's a really really fast car. Ish grand. I mean, look at that car. Wild. It's a nice looking car. It was well styled. That five series in general is well styled. Still looks modern. And additionally, like the technology is good. Like it's, yeah, it's that's good the other in thing. that car. It feels like a fairly modern car still. Yeah, and it still does. What's it's the cheapest stick one we sold? 25.5 is the cheapest stick. That was in 22, but we sold one recently. 35, 35, 35. You can see where the market is going. Yep. I suspect the stick ones won't drop, won't floor no, they'll like They'll have the, a higher floor. For which sure. was true for the E60 also. The yeah, E60 okay. sticks never got down to the 8 range like the, right. like the I wouldn't tip. be surprised if like in the 30s is kind of where the stick yeah. ones kind yeah. of... Because manually 60 and 5s are 20 something and just much more difficult to own. On the subject of uh, insane German car deals, can you please type in 987 to the search bar there? We're going you know to disagree I, on this one. You disagree with me? Uh, well, I mean, get to your point first. Porsche 987. Go to Transmission Auto and sort by cheapest. Have you paid attention to this? Yep. You have. You don't think these are good deals? 987 no. Cayman and Boxsters with automatic <laughs> transmissions are oh unbelievably God. cheap. These are nine to $14,000 cars. Yep. There's a reason. Why don't you have one? Because I, you both have made the point to me repeatedly that I only look for the deal, not the car I actually <laughs> want to buy. Oh, right. Prime example of this. You're dude, looking for the deal. Dude, you don't want a, 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 you don't want a tip Cayman. Okay, but for 12, for 12 as a daily, like, uh, look at that. For 12. For 12. 12. Just buy the car you want. <laughs> and it's not a five speed automatic. You don't care. Weren't they five speed automatic? Uh, uh, eventually they were seven speeds, but still. 
This is a point two. Yeah, this is yeah. a point two. My point is, um, these tip early cars have gotten cheap, and it makes you start to wonder what reason. you can do with them. Porsches don't get this. Nine eight six boxers are also ten grand. Just buy one of those. Yeah, but they had problems. Nine eight yeah, sevens well. are nicer cars, and they're modern, and they look modern, and they feel modern. Some and they like to have a manual transmission. I know. I know. I, a manual I transmission agree. would be nice, but it's a lot more expensive. I'm saying for twelve thousand dollars, you want to daily a Porsche? You can daily a Porsche. You can get probably 25, 30 miles per gallon. You have a pretty uh, practical car. That's so you got trunks front and fair. rear. Like, <laughs> yeah, you do trunks front. That's fair. Just have some fun for twelve. For twelve for twelve to fifty. I mean, that's crazy that they're that low. You could not sold on this. It'll be a couple months and then there'd be nine, and then you'd be sold. Once it gets into the four figures, Flip goes all over. <laughs> well, if, if like, that happens, like, what, one comes up the, at the end of the street. He's in. What, <laughs> <laughs> what, why buy a car you don't want? And it's I think that's that's that. what because, this is because you could. It's would you rather commute in a Model Three or yes. a, a Porsche? A thousand percent of Model Three. I'd rather. Commute well, it's and also, it's yeah. Him. Yeah, I'll, I'll commute in an Ionic Six. Same okay, cost. let's talk about that Ionic Six. What's all right? What's the, there the was a lease deal years? that was this month for two thirty nine with zero a month <laughs> with zero down. You can get a it, new. Wasn't it a twenty four month lease too? Yeah, some of that. You can get a. But think about that. You that's can get a better. new Ionic Six. Yeah, I know. I saw you walk into a Hyundai dealership. It was theoretically just on the on the East Coast. You walk in. You say, "I'll give you." Zero dollars today, <laughs> and you walk out with, with a, a brand new car that's worth forty something. A uh -huh. sticker for two thirty nine a month. That's, that's you're like getting into phone bill territory at that point, right? Like that is a cheap car. Yeah. You need a car. Go to your local Hyundai dealer. And right. If you just six. need okay, and just car. a car, yeah, car. I'm sure you could get anywhere else. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. They said it was only available on the East Coast. I'll but, bet you go. Yeah. But I've I've been watching the inventories creep yep. up on the Ionic Six. Yep. You can get that deal anywhere you want. But there are also stories of uh, the dealer not having the base, which is the SC trim in stock, and just doing it for an SEL. Oh, same price. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to get rid of them. It's going to be true of a bunch of other EVs soon enough. Yeah, but two thirty nine a month really two is two thirty nine like, a month with nothing down. You're, you're not bill. even paying to buy the the, the right. monthly down. Maybe I should consider that as like a you beer, should honestly legitimately <laughs> uh, at that price point. I mean, it's 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 hard. It's such an easy thing to justify. Yeah. If you need just a car, right, for purpose. If, yeah. if my wife got a job that required commuting, she didn't work from home. Tomorrow, I would go down to Ionic Six. Nice like, why, why not? They're, they're nice. One of they have the other, tech. They had, like. Or they're one of the safe. other really cheap EVs, because there's a lot of cheap yeah. EV lease deals. Right and by the way, the Onyx 6 has the base trim has the highest range, which is in the 300s. Oh, that's, really? all, that's all you need. It is heinous. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Deeply. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> there's that. The next thing I want to talk about in terms of deals, Hellcats. Oh. Pull up Hellcats, please, Kenneth. Are, have we reached the point we all dreaded, where Hellcats were on their seventh owner and cheap? Go to lowest price. We've sold them recently. This was recent, a recent development, except for this one. Recent development, oh, they have brought 20, themselves oh, into the third. Oh, man. <laughs> Hell, this is 700 horsepower. They brought themselves into the, the 30s. Here they are. For both charger. Yeah, knocking on the 30s. That's what, dangerous. And by the way, if you go back and look, if you go back to that page, the these are, it's a 19 for 38. Yep. The 15 for, was sold for 39, had only 11,000 miles. And a, and a stick. A high mileage 15 is probably a low to mid 30s car right now for 707 horsepower. Wow, that is insane. Oh, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a problem. It's always been a problem. <laughs> it's going to be more of a problem now. Absolutely amazing. Wow. When, these are going to be knocking on the door of the 20s here and not all that long. Hellcats are. What do you think the floor is? Especially because there is no more. At the end of the day, it's a Chrysler product, so you think to yourself, there is no floor. Yeah. However, it has 700 horsepower. Yeah. And, and it's so, like the, the last of that type of car. There the, will, there's a new Charger, but it's not really. There will always be right, a demand same. for a 700 horsepower engine to put in stuff, too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. no matter what, they will always have some value. It's like NAS Defenders. There but it's great news if you're in the military and just got that first check like we see a lot of people do in San Diego. <laughs> it's no getting even easier. You don't even need go to PenFed and boom, you're good. You don't even need a, a regular V8 one. You can go pick up a, a, a Hellcat. You can get a Hellcat. 707 horsepower. For probably thirty-five. Yep, wow, that's that's, really that's insane. Now. That's so much performance for the dollar. That's Wild, crazy. and it's a trash car, and it's trash. That's great, the interior's but bad. cheap speed, cheap, it is it's cheap, cheap speed, speed, and getting cheaper. And that's what Chrysler's always been great at with their performance cars, and it's amazing. It's it's wonderful. Yep. And the Chargers seem to be the cheap ones, which is great because it's a more practical. Yeah, you can you can no die, die with more of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wrong. Nope. Uh, Kenan, you have another market report information. Yes, so to go Porsche ahead. 996 Turbo. Oof. So we have long considered the 996 Turbo to be quite a buy. This one blew my mind yesterday. So this was an auto, admittedly. Tip, Tip but 35. Feels right. There was a time when they were really on the ascendancy, Man. and it seems like they have kind of started to settle and come back down. This one for 75 is 
a, a big number. Incredibly but nice one, though. 5,300 miles and a manual transmission and just very nice in general. And and it's $75,000. Like, that, I think they have settled into a spot that they are going to stay for a while. Oh. It seems. Yes, you know, it's expensive, but like... They're still pricey, though, compared to where they were. Well, of course. It's hard to erase that from your mind that they were yeah. all pretty I mean, cheap. But I guess what was the, the, the floor? It can't have been that I much. I bought and sold one in 2012 for like 30. Jeez. Bought so it, put a clutch in it, sold it for like 32. Right, but I mean... There was a time. I mean, that was when regular ones were 14. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I look at this and I'm like, yeah, it's still a little bit expensive. But keeping in perspective where we've just come from with the 996 Turbo and a where year or two ago. 993 Turbos are and 997 oh. Turbos are, these are actually still a bargain. Because you can get, it looks like you can get a mid mileage one 50 60. Right? Yep, exactly. Or th I mean, this Which one, is, this one was an X50 car, and yep. but it had 80,000 miles on it and 49.5. I mean, that's that's the car to buy. To I agree. Honest. That's the one. And keep in mind, the 996 Turbski specifically, Turbski, uh, didn't IMS. have the IMS issue. It had the right. Metzger yep. engine Metzger block like the GT3 996, and so it didn't have the Man. IMS. had a lot of other problems. No, it actually didn't. I had <laughs> one, did. and it was fantastic. Nope. It was an amazing car to drive. I still think it's an amazing car to look at. Um Hard to believe they're 50 Right. The biggest problem it has for a lot of people is the headlights, but no, it just doesn't bother I, I me. I just the turbo don't. looks great. The turbo, I think the turbo looks, looks so really good. Especially good. from the back. Pull yep. up that rear picture. Man. I mean, it's just so the, wide. You get the one, one left. You get the wide body. Look at that. that and, the, and the turbo twists. And this the cuts on the bumper. Like, yeah, it's just cool. It was a beautiful car. I am. I want one deeply. All of a sudden. <laughs> well, good news for you, Filippo. You, 50 grand. <laughs> if you can find one that's you a deal in his neighborhood, he'll get one up. Exactly. No problem for him. Okay, we have a few things to discuss in the world of cars beyond market and news. Starting with the Cybertruck. Yep. Cybertruck. I finally drove one. We all actually drove it. It was sure here in did. the office. Yep. Didn't crest a half a mile an hour, but you're right. We all drove it. I have put my video of the Cybertruck up. Went up yesterday. And um, wow. The, it's been very well received because I was positive about it. And the Tesla community loves you as long as you're positive about the Teslas. Um, what did you they don't care about negative, honesty. Though. So I, I gave it a five for styling, and I've been getting assailed right now because people are like, it's beautiful, it deserves a 10. And it's, is it people who, yeah. It's, Which it's striking. me. It's yep. striking. It's certainly, right. But it certainly isn't people beautiful. People are like, well, it turns heads. Well, that's not. That's not the beauty. same. That's, right. Yeah. I could light Ken on fire. That would turn a train, heads. Yeah, right. a train wreck turns heads, <laughs> but that's not what we're looking for. So it's a little bit odd that people are complaining about that. But generally speaking, um, I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I was it's, ready to yeah. hate it, and I didn't. The build quality is astonishingly bad, but it is a cool-looking object. And just to see the motion is like a car into a fridge. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your fridge more carefully. <laughs> My build fridge is very well made. I, I just the but, thing about it, the thing that hit me, and I, I mentioned this in the video, but to really underscore it, the thing that hit me is uh, the people who are most the truck most itself, angry <laughs> is that. Pickup truck people are mad about it because they think it's a stupid truck. I mean, it doesn't it tow, it doesn't haul, it doesn't off-road. Objectively. I got all these friends with Raptors. I've never seen them do any of those right. things. <laughs> right. Ever. Right. They bought it, the Raptor, because it's cool. Yep. And I think they're upset because there is a new game of cool. Right. And it's the Cybertruck. Yep. Ken, you loved it. Which is I thought fascinating it was, yeah, to I me because it's, it's just, not. I you. think it design wise, it's just so it reminds me a lot of the Countach in Oof. terms of its reception uh, and also okay. like just how right. crazy it looking. It, no, it's very angular. Yeah. Like it's the windshield is one plane, just like the Countach. We were talking yesterday also. The other thing that is similar about the Countach about is that it has broken free of the automotive zeitgeist and yeah. is in just general culture, which yeah. is yeah. also true of the Countach. The last car we were thinking of that did that was the Veyron. Like, you didn't have to be into cars to know the, about right. the Veyron. If you asked a normal person, like, if you got all, all the way in the world, what car would you buy? They go, oh, Ve Bugatti, Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, yeah. They, they knew. But uh, now, will this age as well as the Countach? Probably not. If but, you look up to any rando on the street, they would know right. the Veyron and the Cybertruck. Well, and you drove it. What was the attention like oh as God. you drove it? You can't, you can't drive the thing around. You cannot drive the thing around. People absolutely freak out. Equal level as the Countach since you own it? No, one. more, absolutely more than the Countach. More? I do suspect, though, that it, P the Cybertrucks, we're already seeing a lot of them here in yep. Southern California. Oh, yeah. They're getting delivered. Pretty much every day you see yeah. one. And yeah. so I think give it a year or two. I don't necessarily think it's going to be like the C8 Corvette where now it's just like a normal thing. I think we will always look at it and be like, what is that? Yeah. 
but but it's it going to will lose you. People aren't going to be coming up to every one they see because it would be right. too many. It's certainly well, like in for our local cars and coffee. It's not like cool to show up on one anymore. No. Like that's been no, yeah. It, the Hummer that, EV. I remember that was a very short lived thing yeah. too. Yeah, and, for all those R one T. We sold our first R one T for one hundred thirty five thousand dollars. You know, yeah. <laughs> at the <laughs> yeah. end of the day, and since it's Tesla, it'll look identical for the next fifteen years, and then maybe they'll restyle it. You know, I will say in terms of the looks, I do think the design is pretty crazy and cool and amazing. It's going to be. I wonder how it's going to age. Are exactly. we going to look back at this as that was like the pinnacle of the crypto ridiculous exuberance? Yeah. And, and in 20 years, is it just going to be a total embarrassment to be seen in? Maybe. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> but but, yeah. but it, Like H2, right? Which at the time was the, oh, was kind of the point. pinnacle of that era's yeah, exuberance. Right. And it'll, kinda, it'll, it'll be like, the, it'll be whatever the rad would have now will be called. Like they'll show up, oh dude, a cyber truck. I haven't seen one of those in years. And uh, the, the thing, of course, because it dents so easily, all of them will be slightly different shapes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but I am Hummer. like, it is a good point, though. I don't, I don't really know. I, for now, though, it is, it, maybe it goes through cool, and then it goes to uncool, and then it goes through ironic cool, and it comes back up again. Yeah. Who the hell knows? But I, I wonder the if there H2 will be comparison is a great Hummer H2 one. Yeah, was the call. hottest thing in the world. On like, some wheels. everyone wanted one of those. And, and now you see one on its Three like, years later, it was, yikes. Yep. Well, they sell relatively oh. well on the site, admittedly. Yeah, they do. But, they do. They do. But. Um, okay, so that's that. Kenneth. Give us your automotive take of the week. Yes. So the E39 M5, my beloved M5, is going to go to its trip to the spa oh. with my friend Ryan at E39 Source. And we've been building the the battle strategy for what needs to be done. What does need to be so done? So I have owned the car for 80,000 miles now. I'm coming up on the second wow. round of doing things again. Like, it's just like yep. stuff has worn out in 80,000 miles and needs to be replaced. And uh, one thing I've noticed is that I think it's having some differential issues. Um, so you like hear a when I go, No, no, no. No sound. But when it goes around a corner, it's like locking more than it's supposed to like i can hear both wheels like lose traction and it's like mm, okay that's probably not great i've replaced it? the differential once already i oh. with a used one i didn't rebuild it rebuilding is not as expensive as i thought it was but i think i might have to do that it needs rear axles they're original and like the boots are all dried out and it's just like time to do those and it's wheel okay. bearings yep and then the um the drive shaft needs a little bit of work too. There's a bearing in that that needs to be replaced. And so like it starts to add up. Then I want to replace the AC compressor because it's making some noise and like I should. And like so the scope creep noise. has been extreme. Okay. What are we what are we what is our latest estimate of the cost of this repair? So assuming the differential does not need to be rebuilt, which we're going to test, right now it comes It'll to eight thousand eight hundred something so far. That's mm. not so bad, but there no. will be a It'll lot be more over, while you're in there. It's gonna be over ten. This I'm is like, gonna be an eighteen thousand dollars. You wanna know what one of the most expensive parts of this is though i'm the replacing labor. underbody plastics that have like crumbled and fallen away those are stupid expensive may i make car. a suggestion don't yeah nope <laughs> <laughs> not gonna do that car has to be perfect and so the fender liners that, like are being replaced like, each take, of those is like four hundred dollars what would it time. take for you to replace un in unseeable underbody plastics in one of your cars what would your net worth have to be <laughs> i don't what's the lottery if, if it currently? Were free if it were under a hundred dollars total all in <laughs> No, There's not it. one piece of trim on it that's hundred dollars. Not anymore. They're all really. Expensive. So you're gonna have a very expensive E39 M5 service. When is this gonna happen? Uh, I'm trying to figure that out, and then I'm also trying to figure out what I because it's my only car. What I want to drive in the meantime. So I've been looking on Turo and like getting some ideas. Oh. Um, Tyler Hoover rented a Ferrari California for. I might do that for a weekend. It was like two hundred dollars a day. Oh, you mean when the M5's gone? Yeah. Gonna, so it's yeah, like, but I also kind of want add to I want the to cost try... of the service by renting a Ferrari right. for You'll two hundred a day. Me, though, because I want to try some. <laughs> I'd love to do like a, a BMW i3 for a little bit. Would be kind of fun yeah because like i would love a i need the 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 problem is like we live relatively all close to one another so i want to take my car to play tennis with you guys yep. in the morning and the m5 really hates that it like sub 10 miles to the gallon driving here and there it's i'll give you a great. deal on renting my bar the oh wow as long as you do that for it. a little bit first oh well i would do that regardless i, I couldn't exist <laughs> with car not yeah <laughs> sleepo does not believe in cleaning cars and they're my always cars busy. get used yesterday i went to fiesta island with my dog and sean our producer's dog which was great but then cassie my dog was very wet but I was in that car. Oh, so the she... car smells like No, it actually dog. doesn't because I, I have the convertible down. Well, the, the amount of money I'm like going to dog. pay, it's, it's coming down. The seat <laughs> is, um, the back seat is a little, a little sandy. Yeah, what exactly is a deal on the 500 a bark that smells like wet dog? <laughs> it does smell like is wet dog. Is that 19 a day? With sand is in it. Is it 9 a day? <laughs> dog hair in the window window seals that I have to get out with. Yeah, like, there's certainly that. The i3 would be fun because it would give you an opportunity to drive a BMW with a carbon tub. Oh, right. That's true. Nice. I'm looking for that. You know, so I'm really exploring the limits of grip on the way to tennis in it the morning. It is the cheapest carbon tub car, as you know. The Alpha 4C, those are like 40, yep. 50, Carrera GT's, a million bucks. The i3 is $1,100. Yep. 
for a carbon. No, they're more than you think. They're, but they, they are more than you they're think. About, they're about, really about 15 grand, I think. Of what? They're like eight. They've, They've gone up, up substantially. All, all, all the older EVs, uh, Fiat 500 E, the what Bolt the even. Cost? What is like an 11 yeah, well, the, the Leaf had some battery issues, so they're all <laughs> they're, they're all 64 seven miles grand. from new. Seven grand? Yeah. So, I don't, so I, I'm, I'm looking around San Diego, seeing like what's out there for rent. There's, when is this service happening? Uh, I think I'm going to end up doing this in May, I think is when oh, I'm going to do this. Man. So summer... You know, getting You're there. gonna be fifteen grand more into the M5 after all the crap you gave me. We Probably. both spent thirteen on our cars last year. And by the yes. way, Canon's M5 for those that don't know has 235,000 miles. I think. Yeah, I think I you heard that correctly. The moon. But this is what it takes to keep. People want to know what it takes to keep an E39 M5 like really nice. So you've been in my car. You know it how is. Well it is it incredibly. Well People want to know what it takes to keep an E39 M5 nice. The answer is spend it twenty four hundred dollars on plastic underbody panels that you can't see. Can I ask you a question, Kevin? <laughs> but it looks I, great when it's on a lift. <laughs> I know that you have a binder of all your service records. Have you two. totaled all of them? No, I don't. I do also want, have a guess. I have a spreadsheet. I have never used the sum function don't, to figure do out. Do you want to guess? Don't Just throw out a I'm number. Probably Probably close to fifty into it now. Plus what purchase price. I bought. Don't forget, I bought the car for ten eight. So I'm probably getting close to fifty. So you but, had a great cost basis, and unfortunately now he's, unfortunately now he's seventy thousand dollars into the car. Kenan's is the best kept E39 and five probably in the world, but except, it has two hundred thirty thousand miles. But the paint is top. He needs repaint it. That's repaint. the crazy. Thing. Well, that's that's the thing. I've, I've want, I haven't done cosmetic stuff to Have the cars in two thousand seventeen, and I really want to. But every you know, it's like, but I want to make sure it's mechanic. Oh, it's mechanic. Coal components first, then cosmetics. And so I've never... I agree with that. So I, I, I think yeah. in the fall, I'll probably put oh more God. money into the paint. But yeah, it does need some paint stuff, um, but Kenan, that's a nightmare to deal buy with. Buy an Aston Martin or a Ferrari <laughs> 550. Tell us about your experience with the 550. Nice transition. Nice. That was well a very done. smooth transition. Yeah, so I, I recently drove a Ferrari 550, which is currently on the site. I also had the pleasure of driving a Ferrari 575 Marnello, which is coming to the site. Good love on Monday. Uh, and... And so these cars for me, I, I, they're seminal vehicles. Like I have lost it after them for a long time. My uncle has a manual 575, a factory manual car. Um, and I just adore the cars. Yeah. And so I wanted to get, but I wanted some seat time. It's been a long time since I've driven a 550. I did when I worked in an exotic car dealership, but it's been a while. So I drove them both. My impressions are like engine incredible. So smooth and so refined and like no vibrations enter the cabin. It just like, it just is like a turbine. It just goes. And you look down and you're like, you're doing, you're going really fast. But it doesn't really yeah. interfere. And the five seven five was even quieter because the header design is different. Um, the steering, amazing. The three fifty five, they really struggled to get it right with power steering. The five fifty five seven five nailed it. Like yeah. really did a good job with it. Much nicer. Uh, the transmission, one the five fifty, obviously a manual, exceptional. The F one, the five seven five, way better than I would have thought. Mechanical, yeah. feels good. It was honestly. And by then they it had, they had, it had gotten running, good. Yeah, F one. They had been using F one for. Almost ten years. It came out in ninety. Not quite. Nineteen ninety eight with the three fifty five, and this was the five seven five came out in 02. But it was a revised system, and it was unique to the six twelve and five seven five. It yeah. didn't use the same system that's in the three sixty, so it was very robust and more serviceable actually. Um, but I found it was great. You pull the paddle like downshift; it blips for you. You don't really have mm. to do that. If you ride the throttle just a little bit, it smooths it out even more. But it was you still have to work with it a little bit. But admittedly, at one point I was I was like getting I was at a stop and getting ready to go, and I I reached for the clutch pedal with my left huh. leg. Yep. Like, oh. It does have a cool mechanical feel to it. I've really kind of come around on these sequential manual transmissions, surprisingly, because I hated them at the time. Totally. And but I've did. driven them, and I've, I'm feeling like it's a lot more fun because it feels a lot more mechanical, it, more fun than I realized. You still like put in some work and some thought. Yeah. And it's PK. not just like PDK like, where you, you put it in here. You hear it make noise. Yep. Then there's the suspension. Very, very soft. The 575 in particular surprised me now it's known because they revised the suspension system for that car allegedly they had talked to their customers they want it to be even more cushy gt right. focused because all their customers are 80. i think they went a little far when you when you either uh, a in the video eventually when you see it like i do like a quick shuffle with the steering wheel to demonstrate this and the car just like like didn't know what to do it was like a balloon animal like all over the place now it's of course car. it's a gt I, car. I don't agree with this entirely i i love that car dearly and i have i'm starting to nurse a theory that it's going to be treated like the Daytona one day. Well, looked at as an icon like the Daytona. Yes. Now, uh, now to be clear, this is specific. Like the five seven five felt that way. I think if and I talked to someone, our friend Nick, who who had owned one of the cars and daily drove it, he upgraded the shocks in that car to transform. Yeah, I mean, so I think if you yeah. give it modern suspension, that, that will do. And it. also, you got to remember its purpose. It was never intended to be a sports car, and that was back in an era when Ferrari. 
like now you kind of take for granted that every Ferrari is really fast and yeah. good handling and all that. Back then, they really were like a 456 was supposed to be a luxury car. A 550 was supposed to be like a long highway cruiser. Yeah. Of course, its competition was the Diablo, which is yeah. <laughs> not Yeah, that. which most people don't realize, but that was in that fact was, the case. Yeah, Lamborghini went that way. Although with Ferrari B12, basically Ferrari went seeded that, that the now, sporty market to but Lamborghini. I, but I will say it's an incredibly special car. Both of them are incredibly special. Um, I think that the, the value is what blows my mind. 550, 550s are becoming very expensive. You remember yep. when they were seventy, eighty thousand dollars cars? Well, now really, really, really nice low mileage ones are almost three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and five seven fives aren't. They yeah. are substantially less. The manual ones are half a million dollar cars now. Really, four hundred, five hundred. I, really, 500, I got into this myself too. I started looking up Super Americas and all that. And I think. The car is still undervalued, 550 or 575. Stick 575s are unusually expensive, 400, 500, I don't know. They only that. built 243 yeah, of them. Yeah, they've only built 199 Stick 612s, and those aren't selling for much. Well, four seat, the four-seater Ferrari curse. I know, was but strong. I, I, the car is so beautiful that I've really started to kind of, in my mind, start thinking that it's, I really think it might be a Daytona no, Sunday. I, I, and I have this thing that the 550 Marinello is rarer than the 300 SL. And yep, people so need to keep else. that in mind. Yes, 550 Maranello, not counting Varchetta, <laughs> just the Maranello. It's, it's tight. But even but when you count, made. even when you count the two of them, the production, as I mentioned in my 550 video, the production numbers are not dissimilar. And I also did say, and I agree that it will be viewed as like the Daytona is now, um, especially just due to attrition. You got to imagine those numbers. Are it's even rare. Even it's beautiful. I think the tip ones will not it be as gorgeous. well valued. No, but, but conversions are a thing. Like conversions you, are a thing. I think that the way to get into a 5, at least my view on the market right now, if you want to get into a 550, the way to do it is to buy your Euro one, those sell for substantially less. less. Even if you lived in California and wanted to carb it and all that stuff, you could and you'd still be way less um, if that's if that's of value to you. Or you get a 575, do the suspension thing, make it a little bit more modern that's and cool, swap it. Yeah. 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 But even so, like just doing the suspension and enjoying it with F1, it's a Are you gonna do wonderful either? car. I'm, you know, it's something I'm certainly thinking about. It's between that and the 612 for me because I love the 612. But I think for now, I want more of a sports car and I think that would be a better... It's just too similar to what the M5 does, you know, comfortable right. GT Cruiser. So I think that right now I'm still focused on yeah. Aston Martin, then Boxer Spider, and then wow. keep Which the Boxer Spider for the next 20 years. He's planned. got it all planned out. Got a plan. As do I. I My other car news Ooh. is that I have sold my Toyota Land Cruiser. Thank God. Goodbye, Land Cruiser. <laughs> Not going to uh, miss it. I'm not going to miss any of these cars. I, I cannot <laughs> tell you. I'm also selling tomorrow. I'm selling my wife's car which I'm going to reveal for the very first time here on the pod, wow. is a Volvo XC60. My wife's been driving around a Volvo XC60 for the last six years. Hey, at least you got her the T6. She's got a T6. Yeah, um, I never went over 40 miles an hour, I think, maybe the time you we <laughs> I drove it one time on the highway, and boy, it was, <laughs> it was something. That's gone. The Land Cruiser's gone. I feel so free. And I posted this thing that I was selling the Land Cruiser, and every time a YouTuber sells a car, apparently there's this enormous backlash from the yeah. audience. How I can't you? believe you're selling this car. This car is who you are as a person. You're ruining your life. This, is, this isn't this is what you're ruining everything I loved about you. I didn't know that because I don't haven't sold a lot of cars since I've started my YouTube channel. And But apparently that happens. And I watch other YouTubers try to like, say like i know my audience is going to hate me for this but i no. have to sell it and i'm like i wonder why they say that well now i know no. and um well i for one agree the xc60 is just, <laughs> i'm just gonna stop crucial. watching your videos can, can i ask you a legitimate question yeah how many times have you driven the xc60 you've owned it six years a five few, years a few, a few. i i, I like it more I than like one car too okay. it's a nice it's a nice little car great so, great sizing the point is i feel incredible and and i think but my point was going to be that young people who are 22, yeah. they're like, oh, you got to get cars, man, get, get more cars, this is cool. And I thought that when I was 22 also. But now, as I'm older and have responsibilities and all, you start to realize that like getting more stuff also means maintaining more stuff. And owning this Land Cruiser and my Defender and my A-Class, and it's just like, eventually, you're just like, this is too much stuff. Well, and it's different when the work goes into owning an exciting car, like right. the Countach, the Courier GT, where it's like you put in the work, it's like, I'm right. excited to use it. I am it's willing to, experience. right, yeah. it's but worth when it. it's more normal yeah. vehicles it's just kind of a headache and it became truly a and also headache. i don't think there's any 22 year olds like yeah buy more cars get an xc60 you gotta have one <laughs> well, of those that's the a, thing. people like, are like mad at me for selling this land cruiser i'm like this is a car this is traffic <laughs> like it's a nice car i like the land cruiser but like yeah. this, is this isn't strange. like i'm traffic. not like ruining my life you should see the comments on my instagram doug you're selling everything that you're selling out you're selling everything that made you cool 
I, don't I think had the this car two years, man. <laughs> 200 series Land Cruiser with 115,000 miles. Who right. Cares? It's like there's a thousands of these yeah. out there. But it just feels so nice to be free. What are you down to? I'm down to six automobiles. Out of front from 10? After from that, nine that or 10, yeah. I sold four and bought one, which I'm revealing next week, but it's a Toyota Sierra. Sequoia TRD Pro. I've already revealed that on Instagram, I think. But I'll reveal it soon in, in a wow. video. Wow. And, um, and it's nice to trade. So basically, I sold a 1998 car, the A-Class, a 97 car, the Defender, a 2018 car, my wife's Volvo, and a 2013 car, the Land Cruiser, and got a 24 car. Nice. A new thing that I don't have to think about. Thank God. That's what I wanted for my life. Some I'm happy for Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I'm happy for it now. That said, the Sequoia is tasteless and not, not <laughs> nice. It's but just camo, but it as an camo upside, it does have camo arches. seats. Camo seats, man. This is the way it oh, works. Oh, better cam camouflage the child. Well, luckily we have Kevin. He can paint them black. You know what his problem it. is? He doesn't appreciate camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially on a white or black wheel <laughs> with black fender arches. Ken and I will teach you about the military later. For now, <laughs> that Toyota Sequoia has single-handedly been on the front lines of battle. But we'll talk about that later. Um, Felipe was like, what battle? It was in San Antonio. They built it. It was a hard build. <laughs> Look at me now. All right, I want to move on to the question and answer All segment. Right. Now, yeah. if you want to send us questions that we will answer on the podcast, you go to carsandbids.com. There's a community tab, and each week we will post a post that says, hey, put your questions here, and we will answer the most upvoted ones. Oh. And then, but we'll skip some of them if they're controversial. No, I'm kidding. Well, generally, I, <laughs> this week I picked all of the most upvoted ones, starting with uh, Manual Frontier Guy, mm -hmm. who asks, when will you do another car spotting video? Well, we got good news for you. Oh, we have started to film a lot more videos for the Cars and Bids YouTube channel with Filippo, Kenan, and some other friends yep. of mine. And we just did a car spotting video. We're going to do another one. Yep. We're going to do a furthest away license plate challenge. Oh, nice. <laughs> but there's a lot of great content coming, so get ready because we did do another car spotting video and there's more to come. And I just did one with Hoovy, which is even better. Okay. Next question from Ryzen Legacy. Since this is now the final year, reportedly, of the new the, the Nissan GTR, I still think it was the new GTR, of the Nissan GTR, how, how do you think the R35 will be perceived in the next 10 years? Old, timeless, good value, ugly, underpriced. What a great question. I've been thinking about this question all week, and I don't have a great answer for I it. I think it's going to be good value. I think it will be really nice ones also be iconic to a specific generation that grew up with them as first new GTR we could get here. It will not be viewed, I don't think, as iconically as the R34. I agree with that. Because uh, that's that's the one. Yeah. Um, but this one you can actually buy and use. And like if you want to yeah. do mods, make crazy power, like huge community behind it. So I think it'll be a beloved car. Um, and, and of course, the next one, if they do one, will be electric and not, not as exciting yeah. as this one was. I could see values also going way high for the very late production, yep. limited edition models. Well, late, late, they yep. made some late production, super low volume. Or that like yeah. light. Silvery purple, whatever it's called. I could also see. Yeah, I could also see historically really early, crazy un unmodded, low mileage ones being worth because that when that car came out, it changed. Remember everything. it was, it was an, cheap. It was an iconic car. Yeah, it was cheap it was, initially, right, and then they kept but racing, but nothing they changed, ones. and it got more and more and more. Well, because they kept the new one when it first came out, it was like fifty grand, or it wasn't, but it was like but, seventy. Yeah, and it had launch. And then every on, year it was yeah, like 76, 78, right. 84. and now it's like one hundred and sixty. Yeah, and so the, yeah, the used ones have always maintained their original right. sticker because <laughs> instead of depreciating, yeah. they just raised the price on the new yeah. ones. I agree that they'll remain like iconic for people of our general generation. Yeah. But there are so many of them. And the yeah. entire thing was that it had incredible technology. But so does like a Model 3 now. I disagree with both of those points. Wow. I don't think there are that many of them. I think a lot of them have so been destroyed 13, or modified. Years. Yeah, yeah but Filippo, you, you, have you been, you see them driving around? No, never. You wouldn't want to touch one of those cars. Agreed. The only ones that are nice. You're right. The unmodified ones are rare. Unmodified nice ones. Because yeah. also people modded them and sometimes mods, especially in that community, can actually add value. The way that people modded a lot of those, oh, cheap speed at the time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some there's some tough tough looking R35s out there, but, there are some but tough. don't you agree? Like the entire point was it had incredible technology, which was novel at the time. Yeah, but it's less novel now. My counterpoint to that is that's true of almost every other car that has become valuable and desirable over time is that it had incredible technology at the time. When the GTR came out, I I will never forget car and driver or someone <laughs> I apparently forgot did a. <laughs> 
did a road <laughs> test against the 599, which was new. And the 599 cost four times yeah. the price. And the GTR was faster in every right. measurable it was, category. It, was incredible. it totally changed what we thought as of performance. And it kind of moved the bar forward. Yeah. It was suddenly it's like, it. we have and, to be and, faster for, for, than this. For that Nissan. reason, it's, it's right. iconic. But... Will it retain value that much? I, it, I don't it, know. It, the thing that makes a car retain value is, was it an icon of youth? And that car, by doing that? Yeah. And but so it, I think- I, like, think it, I think had it had production stopped in 2017, when it was just six years old, whatever. I don't remember what year it came out. It came out in 2009? Yeah. All right. Had it stopped in 2015 or six years old, maybe. But then they kept going. But they kept going. And they kept they've, going. Only been making, they've only been selling two a month for the last 10 years. No one is buying that car anymore. I truly will. They crossed a price threshold and then people stopped I, buying I, it. I just kind of think amazing. that it, yeah. people don't think about it anymore because there was, it was available for so long. You know there what the allegory is? Factor. It's the NSX. The late NSXs. Which, sure, mm, great that's, ones are. That's a really great one. The late right. NSXs were bolted to the showroom floor at Acura dealerships. Same deal with new GTRs. Give it 20 years. We'll be, we'll be selling on cars and bids. We'll be selling GTRs for 250 Mark my words. Sure, late but, late but like, black editions, 350 Sure. 450. But that's not that. Well, 450. Okay, I mean, <laughs> all right, all right. What, what's the nicest on a 250? Late. Right. But like, that's not that much. No, it's not. I, that's right. It's not that much considering right. that it's been 20 years and all yeah. that. Yeah. But I still think they will retain value and they will be kind of a generation defining car. All right. Uh, next that. question from Alex Hay. Will luxury small cars ever become a viable segment? Signet, et cetera. No. No. And the answer is, and why is that? Who's buying them? People who live in big cities. So why can't you do it? They just don't want a car. I think... I, I, who, legitimately, I've never understood the market for this. People in New York City want a small car they can park, but they, they want a luxury just car. There's have a lot a of driver. people like this. Like, have it, a driver. I mean, at that There's point. a big difference between, like, <laughs> well, I want a $70,000 Mercedes and I can get a driver. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, what is your reason? I think that you can't make small cars luxurious. I think the way that small cars are, being physically tiny, a lot of the benefit of, of luxury cars, they have an enormous amount of space Comfort and size and to put in right. sound deadening. And, and Physically that, speaking, with a small wheelbase, yes, you just can't. Yeah. You can't, you can't make it comfortable, and you, yeah, you don't have room for suspension travel either. Because, That's right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you're really up against it. There. But I agree e with that. EVs mean that you can go with more sound deadening and more weight that you couldn't do before. What so about maybe the smallest that, you could go would be to make like an actually yeah to I make really something wonder. that rivals an S class. Oh, oh, that, 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 that might almost be impossible. That is right. certainly impossible. Like the Signet, he brings up the Signet as an example, but that Nobody car is desirable also, because it's a me. I will right. say, you know. Porsche recently came out with that new suspension technology where you can drive it over a bumpy road yeah. and the, the shocks adjust so perfectly the car just goes like this. And the I've been hearing about that for years though. Wild. Like, show me that. If that ended up in a Bosch small had car, you might. But again, it's suspension yeah, yeah. travel. You still have limited. issues with sound editing. Like, you still although have sound editing goes away a little bit if it's, when, it's electric. The, yeah. For two reasons. The, 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 there's no engine and the problem was always you would, ha you would add too much weight but, and then the small engine that would fit in the engine bay wouldn't power enough EVs fix both of those but problems. But the problem with the small EV, I guess it wouldn't matter as much in the city, but then you have no range because it's so small. Oh yeah, with the you batteries. got no range at all. There's right. something to this so, though. Uh, I think a small something. luxury car would be cool. Can I've I, always felt can it can would, really but it's not. Though. The G-Wagon is the small luxury Other car. Other manufacturers have found ways to appeal to high net worth individuals in cities with just cuteness. The Fiat yeah. 500 is a great example That's of this. A good point. Everybody Mini bought Cooper, one. Right. Bring because back Beetle, the Figaro. It, <laughs> yeah. Pe people kind of understand that it won't be luxurious, but it's cute and that's okay. That's a good point. So why make that car luxurious? What's the point? That's a great point. Because the Mini Cooper. Who's old, buying it? Uh, a Mini Cooper sold to, like, initially sold to like enthusiasts and also old, yeah. wealthy women who wanted something cute. Right. right. And they could have they could have bought an S Class all day long, but they like, yeah. I wanted something just to go to the store. Oh, oh look, it's got British flags on <laughs> <Right>. the mirrors. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm glad I got point. to a better point than that's my original one. That's a good point. They should just do that instead. Yep. Okay, next from Junovich. Would love to hear your guys' opinions on the Cybertruck auction. Last week, we auctioned a Cybertruck, and it didn't sell. Yep. Um, but... I have a lot of opinions. Okay. In the last day of that auction... So, it, Tesla Cybertruck inventory has been rising. They've been delivering them, unlike yeah. Hummer or GMC, yeah. which never delivered any Hummer EVs. Um, that meant that prices drop. In the last day of that auction, there were we like heard about a number of people on Instagram selling the trucks for like 160, like offering them for 160, yeah, including notable dealers in the SoCal yeah. area. At that point, first of all, if you were an early reservation holder, which everybody that wants one, yeah, is, is, is. right, right. That you've probably got an email saying, Hey, you'll get a delivery late Q1 or early Q2, so yep. now 
why pay that much over and you see the price go down? I agree. I am su- there stunned won't be like a how market. quickly they have ramped production. It yeah. feels more like Lightning than Hummer EV. Yep, agreed. I don't know why it took GM so long to ramp Hummer EV to the point sold. where they still are building it's still them the by hand. Gener- like it's, <laughs> yeah, they're still, we're, we're, they're we're still, still selling the edition first, ones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Two years later. Two years later. Classic GM. Like, Cybertruck, they're ramping up. We're yep. seeing them all over the place. They claim they've built. Litters. I read last week they claim they've built 2,700 of them already. I believe it. Um, but I'm sure now this week it's 3,700. They they are building these things. It's I, like why why go to the secondary market when you can wait two weeks? And get plus, it? this was not a beast. That's also important to keep in mind. Um, I think right. honestly, I think it got to a market correct number. I totally agree. I so we got another one on the site live right now. Um, our competitors have one as well. We have another one coming. Wait, I'm sure there will yeah, they will sure continue, more, continue. And more and more. I don't think this is going to be like an unusual thing to start seeing being resold anymore. Yeah. And it was so controversial when we listed it. Oh my gosh, they're violating the agreement. I think now the floodgates are open. <laughs> Nobody cares who's yep. going to sell them. Yeah, and, <laughs> it, I, and I think we know what the price is. I don't think our result was low. What, to be what, what, is, what is what was MSRP on the original one? The first one we sold. I don't remember. Like a hundred, probably like a hundred, hundred ten. So it wasn't maybe, maybe the, the the there's some profit for another couple months, and then after that, I wouldn't be shocked if they settle at like MSRP. Yeah, MSRP. I think that's exactly right. One hundred one. MSRP 102. is one hundred one. Yeah. So one hundred one, and it got it to one fifty. Frankly, I would have taken that all day long. Um, yep. Tend to agree. But then you got to do, yeah, if, if there are lawsuit things, you got to deal with that. You know, that's the other thing. Okay, so this has become a, a, a controversial topic. The Tesla will ban you. Let I mean, me tell you something. Won't. Let me tell you something. If you walked into a Tesla dealer right now, the Tesla store. And you had cash to lease a Model Three, you ain't banned. Nope, <laughs> you're unbanned. <laughs> yep. If you walked in and wanted to lease an S or an X, not only are you unbanned, but <laughs> but also isn't it like they, they they're probably doing it by account? The they're probably doing it by account, right? Just make another account. They're like, yeah. I don't, I don't think there's banning no. anybody. I, I think don't that's think talk. Either. Like Land Rover. Okay, so back in the day when the like the Range Rover came out in thirteen, yeah, tons of those. Uh, ship to other countries and Land Rover created a broker list and if you were on the broker list you couldn't buy a new Land Rover anymore and what so what the what the people were doing who were shipping them which was totally legal but Land Rover didn't want to happen what the people were doing was they would hire like a school teacher they yeah. would give them all the money they'd pay the school teacher 10 grand and the school teacher would buy the Land Rover well right. now if those people wanted to get a new Land Rover you know what Land Rover would say please yeah come on over <laughs> you go to discovery sport yeah not only are you not on the broker list anymore but but we were we are thrilled to give you a great deal as long as you actually take this thing off the lot yeah. this month can you right. can you pick it up by the end of the quarter yep. <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> new vehicle inventory is not what it was two years ago right no no it's not. It, it was it was a lot of talk that they would ban people and they would sue people i don't think it's realistic and i just yet. don't think like based on the people who will be flipping them and selling it's like there's just no way they're gonna have the even if they hire a great legal firm they're just not gonna have the capacity to sue that many they, people right I mean, this it's is not this is already the second one we have listed. We got another one coming. They got one. They're, they're on eBay. A few of them have sold it, like Megan and stuff. It, they're, they're not, they're not suing these people. It's stupid. It's a stupid concept. Yeah, it's they could right. brick it or whatever, and I, I do think that kind of scares people. I think some people would rather wait to, for their reservation, yeah, but that. I don't think they're even going to do that, to be honest. Plus, it shows that there's demand. I, that's what yeah. I didn't understand in the first yeah. place. Why does Tesla care? It shows that people want these things 60 grand right. over a sticker. And it's not, somebody, many, it's if not anything, like they're building more. They're not adding supply. They're just right. moving a car around. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, next question from Arav2020. Of all the cars you have owned, what is your favorite? What are the cars, uh, what are you, cars you replaced and the ones you recently sold with? What is your wife's crossover? Answer the wife's crossover question already. Um, of all the cars I have owned, my favorite? 1983 Lamborghini Countach. What about cars Carrera that, GT, huh? I'm saying it here. Wow. What about cars that you've owned and sold? Uh... I have never sold a car that I really regretted selling. I have over time regretted some more than others. I wish I didn't. I There's, wish I hadn't sold my Viper. Is it financial more than like it's like oh it's worth more now and I should have kept it or is it emotional? Not really, because I could buy all those cars again and I don't, so I must not miss it that, that much. much. Right, you know? exactly. Like the Vipers have gone up, but it's not like they're on obtainium. Like plus, you, can, you don't seem like the kind of person who wants to double dip back into an experience you already had. Right. You want something new. Usually, by the time I'm selling something, I am ready to yeah. to move it along. Now, of course, I think you need to qualify so you prefer the Countach over the career gt please explain why it's better <laughs> <laughs> in what regard it's just so much fun yeah I mean, it's I just agree. so much fun the career gt is better to drive the Countach is more of an experience you would say probably yeah and the career gt i feel like you have to be in a certain mindset to really enjoy it the Countach 
puts you in that oh, mindset. And that yes. difference is substantial. I could get in the Countach not happy, like whatever. And by the end of it, I'm like grinning ear to ear, totally over the moon. Yep. It is it focuses... probably my favorite car that I've ever owned. Now, admittedly, I'm still in the sort of the honeymoon phase. I've only had it for six months. But the Carrera GT, I only got back from Jimmy about the same. And by the way, the Carrera GT is the number two answer to this question. It's right. still uh -huh. incredible. Sorry, but it's GT. cost three times. It costs twice as much. And I think the Countach delivers a better. It's so cool. It is cool. He even liked it. That's really I like, I like yeah, both. That's astonishing. You do not. I don't care that much about either, but I like <laughs> the both. <laughs> Believe it doesn't care about exotic or spe or supercars at all. Next question from Punk Rock Ford. Why doesn't the Lexus ISF get any love from the car community? I don't think that it doesn't. I mean, I, I, mm. uh, whenever I see comparatively? one. Comparatively? Comparatively. I mean, it, it's a little bit more esoteric of a car. It's like... The M3 badge, M5 badge are established. The Audi S4, RS4, like those were established cars. Yeah. The ISF came out at like a weird first. time because that car came out in what, 07 or 08, right around the recession? Yeah. They didn't sell that many of them, but I, I don't know. I freak out whenever I see them. It's a reliable V8, cool looking small sedan. And there is a community behind them. So I certainly have respect yeah. every time. And I would also awesome. argue if you look at prices, yeah, ISS have strong. actually maintained their value way better, better than, than any of these yeah. other cars. Yeah. I agree that it doesn't quite get as much love as it should because it's really a cool car and it's a rely. But like, what, is, what is a 12 automatic E90 M3 sell right. for? Not 35. No, no way. Right. The other thing is that it, it is auto only. It is, it is auto-only, auto which hurts it. Yeah, that definitely certainly. hurts it. But a lot but of the reliability of the M3s were auto-only. Right, like and all the C63s. for those is probably decrease. Yeah, you're right. C63 is a good kind of It is a little bit less than I than, than it should be, considering what it is. But I have always really respected the ISF. I still think Great it's an car. incredibly cool car. For a time, I've I actually considered getting one alongside the E39 M5. Like, wow. I just, I love those cars. 400 horsepower, cool. rear-wheel drive V8, same size. It's like, yep, let, let's go back and do it. No, no, the, the M5 is a marginally tinier V8. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, four point nine. I consider it because it's just reliable, and you know, it, I wouldn't have to put as much into it as I do the M5. But in the same vein, our next question and final question comes okay. from Hamby eighty six, who asks, as the as a recent buyer of an LS four sixty, pull up the LS four sixty from Cars and Bids. Are these the most underrated yes. cars ever? Uh, underrated? I don't know, but deals yes how are they so cheap that is crazy they're that inexpensive the, the, they're fun I know, I mean, <laughs> fundamentally <laughs> they, they are the same price or cheaper than ls 400s is that true i mean like look look at that I mean, o, 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 07 that's got to be the same price as an ls 400 right the ls 400s are not a lot yeah there's they're like, like 10 right and the ls 460 was like 11 and it's, <laughs> i get 12, 15, I get, 12. I get why the ls 400 is more prized in some way but it shouldn't be i will say one thing that they cool just got better and better and better to the ls totally. 500 h and then who knows what happened. one thing that's cool about, well i disagree with that that yeah, car is the it buy. will be a buy the the it newest one which surely will be the last generation lexus yep. ls that is the buy and i ls is in general it's one of the coolest things in the world you get lexus depre you get lexus reliability but you get Toyota. full size yeah. sedan yeah. depreciation yeah. And so you can buy these things 47,000 miles, 17 grand. I, wow. I mean, that car's got 200,000 miles left. And at the end of it, you'll sell it for nine. Also, the, the, that 2013 F Sport, that was post facelift. Yeah. And, and I also like, think if memory serves, the highest mileage one we've uh, sold. We sold an LS. Uh, 174. The, we, the sold, we sold an LS430, which is also a bargain. All of these Lexus the LS430 is. I, just, I know. I've the, never I, liked how it looked. I would rather get a 460. Yeah, there it is. 628. 628. But that makes the point, miles. which is yep. these cars run forever They're with reliable. basic maintenance. And yeah, it's it's an it's it's un, I don't know if it's underrated because I, I actually hear a lot of people talking about this, but nobody seems but it to want to do it. I, mean, like, look, can I you think it's I mean, the one that sold mo most recently. 07 LS 460. 12 grand. Great photos. 12 look grand. Look at this thing. Six B plates. Been how many, California. How many miles? Light. That interior. 93,000 miles for 12 grand. That that is. That car runs 150,000 more miles with basic prices maintenance. Without the S-Class problem. So that's a question. We always assume that S-Classes depreciated based on their presumed unreliability. Their, their, well, clearly that's not right. true. Just every, nobody wants large luxury nobody sedans. Nobody wants big luxury sedans. Or, I, for that matter, big luxury SUVs. Yeah, although more more so because usually you know what GL five fifty sell for. $3. That's true, but the most of them have off road capability and they st keep their value. G wagons, Land Cruiser, the LX four seventies, but like the the on road luxury ones up. But I the, I think these are incredible deal cars. I always have. I recommend them to everybody. Um, I think that the the, the V eight and the fuel economy probably hurts it a little bit. Sure, but mm -hmm. it can't be that much worse than like a Sentra. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Okay. I think they're incredible bargains. Yeah, this is a great see. daily. You should get one of these. Yeah, should, and it's a very me vehicle. It is a deeply like, kind of car. Just, 
I'll give up the manual thing. But it's for 12 now. grand. Still if he it. bought one of we'll these, see. he would never drive his M5 anymore. I bet he'd be like, ah, I took the LS today. It's yep. it's comfortable. Yeah. I don't have to worry about the I don't have to worry. And I don't. I wouldn't blame him either. I wouldn't. I, I would make <laughs> fun make of him fun once, of and that's it. I'd make fun of him. I wouldn't I'd make, make fun, fun of him. Every time. No, because I, I would want him to embrace that. But, but I would I, also. I would also be in my new phase of wanting to rid myself of stuff. I would also be jealous yep. of his ability to buy something for twelve grand. Wait, and sorry, scroll down. What sold for eighty four fifty? That one had miles. Or it this was the, the high mileage one that I, I noted. But eighty four. Oh God. All right. I know. Actually, I'd pay the extra three grand for a hundred thousand fewer right. miles. <laughs> I think you would mock me mercilessly, and that but, enough but, is to keep me away from. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> we we, we, we got to commit. We I'll will not you, mock I'll him. I promise you, no mocking if you get an LS four sixty. <laughs> if you get and, anything else, mocking. and I'll, I, not only that, I will I will specifically unmock you if you get an LS six hundred HL, which I'm sure we've sold one or oh, two God. of. That'd be a dream. That was Lexus's version of the V twelve. It didn't have a V twelve, but it was their it competitor. Be, it would be a dream. Doesn't appear we've sold any. We no, that's, sold that's, any? That just didn't load correctly. But no, do, that, do you just LS600 without a space? Uh, I swear we sold one. Yeah. One. one. We got to get more of these. They didn't make any of them. That was the problem. It does have a TV in the back. Though. That's something. Dang. What, can, what, can watch? You, you that has a child, uh, what, what movie are they, are they watching? I have no, no idea. No, I what is could that? not I tell you. Tinkerbell, maybe? Is that uh, it may also not be a kid's movie. We don't know. <laughs> there you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is our podcast. We have completed all of our things. Is there any other final thoughts? No. Nope. Kenan, <laughs> Kenan gets a Lexus LS. That'd be a dream. Goodbye, Goodbye everybody. Everybody.